Okay, hi everybody, welcome to the unit of dynamics. Dynamics is the branch of physics that studies forces and their effect on motion. So in the dynamics unit, we will learn about the causes of motion. Remember during kinematics, we did study motion, but we didn't talk about why the motion happened. We just described it. So starting with lesson one, forces and free body diagrams. What is a force? A force is a push or a pull. Forces are vector quantities because when you push on something, it has a direction, right? I can push my calculator up or I can pull my calculator down. It makes sense to talk about direction there. So forces are vectors. Forces are measured in newtons. One of the things we're going to learn in this unit is that a newton is the same thing as a kilogram meter per second squared. And we'll talk about why that is when we start doing calculations in a little bit. To start with, we're going to look at the different types of forces. So we'll start by talking about the force due to gravity. So the force due to gravity is what we call a non-contact force. And this is how it works. So if we draw in the earth, so here's the surface of the earth, and here is me, okay, I have jumped up in the air. The force of gravity comes from the earth pulling on me. So the earth will pull me down, and that we're going to label FG for force due to gravity, okay? The earth pulls me down even though I'm not touching the earth. That's what makes it a non-contact force. Okay, the force due to gravity is always straight down. So it's not going to be a force that pulls something sideways or pushes something up, right? Gravity always pulls things straight down. Next, we'll look at an applied force. This is a contact force. So an applied force comes from a person pushing or pulling on something. So earlier when I pushed my calculator up like this, that was an applied force. In order for that applied force to be there, I have to be touching the calculator, okay? I can't hold my hand here and send forces through the air to the calculator. It doesn't work that way. I have to be touching it. If I'm not touching it, the applied force will not be there. Okay, so an applied force is usually from a person pulling or pushing an object. All right, next we're going to look at the force of tension. Um, actually, I'm going to go back to the applied force for a sec. We abbreviate this F. Okay, force of tension. This is also a contact force. Okay, and this is a contact force that's caused by ropes, strings, cables, etc. Okay, so if we have, let's say we have a box and the box is tied to a rope well, the rope will pull on the box and the force of tension is always angled the same way as the rope is. So if I draw another one, here's a box, but the rope on it is angled like that. The force of tension will be angled in the same way that the rope is angled. And the other thing to know about the force of tension is that it always goes away from the object. Okay, you cannot use a string to push on something. Strings always pull. So you'll notice here my tension force goes away from the box. And again, here it goes away from the box. Next, we're going to look at force due to friction. This is also a contact force. Okay, friction comes from a surface rubbing on an object. So here we have a person pushing a lawnmower. Okay, that lawnmower is going to be sitting on the ground. 
And when the person pushes the lawnmower, there's going to be some friction of the ground on the lawnmower. The thing to know about friction is that it always opposes motion. So if the lawnmower is moving forward, the force of friction has to be backwards. And the symbol for friction is F with a little F. All right, and then we have the normal force. The normal force is also a contact force and it comes from a surface. So here we have a book sitting on a surface. The surface is a tabletop and the table is pushing up on the book. That is the normal force. We write that F with a little N. Okay, so normal forces come from surfaces pushing on objects. The really important thing to know about the normal force is that the direction of the normal force will always be 90 degrees to the direction of the surface. So here, our tabletop the surface is like this. 90 degrees to that is like this, okay? If I had a surface that was angled, so here's my surface, then the normal force would be 90 degrees to the surface like that. The other thing to know about the normal force is that it always pushes away from the surface towards the object. So I draw, I start my pen on the surface and I draw towards the book. That's how I now know that the normal force was up like this and not down like that. All right, so now we're going to look at drawing free body diagrams. So free body diagrams show all the forces acting on an isolated object. Emphasis on all. Okay, so steps for drawing free body diagrams. Draw the object as a dot. Only consider the forces acting on that one object. For each force acting on the object, draw a vector arrow. So they're not just lines, they are arrows. The vector arrow must start at the dot and point outwards, and each vector arrow should approximately represent the magnitude and direction of the force. So that means that bigger forces are going to have longer arrows. For now, because we haven't started doing any calculations yet, you're just going to do your best to estimate the size. Don't worry if you're not sure what the size of a force should be. Just take your best guess for now. Okay, so first example. Draw a free body diagram for the mug shown below. So we're going to draw the mug as a dot, and now we're going to look for all of the forces acting on the mug. What I like to do is draw gravity in first. Now remember the force of gravity always pulls things straight down. So there's the force of gravity. And then we are going to look for the contact forces. So gravity is not a contact force. Um, the way you identify contact forces is you look for things that are touching the object. So when I look at the picture, I see that the table is touching the mug. That is going to be a normal force. Okay, so the normal force is going to be drawn up because it needs to be 90 degrees to the surface of the table. And now I'm going to ask myself if there's any other forces. There's nothing else touching the mug. The only thing touching it is the table. So that means there are no other contact forces. These are the only two forces acting on it. Okay, now you'll notice that I've tried to draw the normal force and the gravity force the same length. The normal force and the gravity force here, we want them to cancel out. The reason that I need those forces to cancel out is that if gravity was bigger than the normal force, the mug would actually be accelerating down towards the ground. If the normal force was bigger, the mug would be accelerating up towards the sky. The mug isn't doing either of those things, it's just sitting on the table, which means the two forces have to be equal so that they cancel out. Okay, next we're going to draw a free body diagram for a tennis ball in free fall. Remember, when something is in free fall, that is another way of saying only gravity affects it. 
So here we have our tennis ball, we'll draw it as a dot. Because it's in free fall, the only force acting on that tennis ball can be the force of gravity. That's it. So that's the complete free body diagram for the tennis ball. Now, because nothing is canceling this gravity force out, the tennis ball is going to accelerate down towards the ground. Okay, next, draw a free body diagram for a puck sliding on ice at a constant velocity. One of the things we're going to learn a little bit later on in the unit is that when you have a constant velocity, your forces must all cancel. Okay, when you have a force that does not cancel out, the object will accelerate. If something is moving at a constant velocity, it's not accelerating. And so all of the forces have to cancel. So if we have a puck sliding on ice, let's draw our puck as a dot. Again, gravity is gonna be pulling that puck down. And because the puck is sitting on ice, the ice is a surface, the ice is going to provide a normal force that pushes up. Now I've drawn Fn and Fg the same size so that they cancel out. Okay, now if they're talking about ice, that means there's very low friction. So unless the question tells you to, you're going to ignore friction because it's usually very small. If the question says, that you're on a rough surface, then you don't ignore friction, okay? Now, this puck is just sliding forward. Nobody is pushing it. It's just sliding forward because of its inertia. So we actually are not going to draw an applied force pushing the puck forward. We would only draw the applied force if it said something like, a person is pushing the hockey puck. Here, no one's pushing it, it's just sliding. Yes, somebody had to push it to get it started in the first place, but we don't care about that. We care about what's happening now. And at this point in time, it's just sliding on its own. Nobody is pushing it. So we're just gonna draw these two forces. Okay, next, draw a free body diagram for a car speeding up. Something that is speeding up is accelerating. So if something is accelerating, that means not all forces cancel, okay? So here is what's going to happen. So we'll draw a dot that represents our car. Again, we'll draw FG down and FN up. Now, when you want your car to speed up, you have to press the gas pedal. What that actually does is it causes the engine to apply a forward force to the car. So the engine is pushing the car forward here. We're actually gonna classify that as an applied force. Yes, it's not a person pushing the car, but it's still something pushing the car forward. So we're gonna call it an applied force. What you'll notice here is that Fn and Fg still cancel. And that's good because the car is not accelerating up to the sky. It's also not accelerating down into the ground. However, the car is accelerating forward. So that means our forward force needs to be the one that does not cancel out. Okay, and last one, a cat stands still on the rough plank shown below. So because they use the word rough, we are not going to ignore friction. Okay, we will include friction. So the other thing here is the cat is standing still. Something that is standing still is not accelerating. And if something is not accelerating, then all forces cancel. So again, if there is accelerating, the forces do not all cancel out. If it's not accelerating, then all the forces do cancel out. Okay, so I'm gonna draw a dot that represents my cat here. We'll start by labeling this downward arrow FG. So gravity always pulls things down. Now we're gonna draw in the normal force. Now the normal force will not point directly up this time because we have an angled surface. Remember what the normal force does is it pushes so that it's 90 degrees 
to the surface. So the normal force is going to be angled kind of like that. So we'll draw that in. Okay. And then the cat has friction acting on him. To find the direction of friction, you have to ask yourself, what would oppose the motion? So if the cat started to slide down this plank, then his motion would be angled like that. I know that he isn't moving, but if he was moving, that's what the motion would look like. Friction will oppose that. So we're going to draw an arrow that points in the exact opposite direction. And that is friction. So friction in our free body diagram looks like that. There we go. So that is the correct free body diagram. Now, what should happen here, I didn't draw this very well, but we can break friction into components and we can also break the normal force into components. So what happens is the X component of the normal force cancels the X component of the friction. The Y component of the normal force and the Y component of friction those two together cancel the force of gravity. So it's a bit hard to see here, and I don't want you to worry about it too much for now, but the forces do all cancel out in this situation as well. So now you're going to go and you're going to do the free body diagrams worksheet, and you are going to check your answers to that when you're done. And that's the end of lesson one.